Well, can I, can I welcome you all to the Buddhist Society um, on this absolutely beautiful day. And today we have a very special guest at this public lecture. First of all, just want to say a word about the subject. The subject is karma, karma, action. And it's probably the central idea of Buddhism. People tend to think of Buddhism as all sorts of things, but unless you understand karma, karma, you don't really understand Buddhism. It's actually the central concept. Without a really good understanding of what it means, we don't understand anything about Buddhism. We can't really say we're even Buddhist. But today we have with us um, a monk from the Buddha Padipa Temple. And the Buddha Padipa Temple is our, is our close neighbor. It's a wonderful temple. Those of you who haven't been there, Please, please go there and go there. As soon as we're out of lockdown, you can go anywhere. Go to Buddha Padipa. It's an absolutely beautiful, lovely temple. It's near Wimbledon, near the games, and that's where one of the Wimbledon champions actually sits and meditates before he takes part in his um, in Djokovic, where, for, where he meditates prior to his taking part in the championships. And uh, his meditations seem to have borne some very good results. So it's a good recommendation. Our speaker today, though, is, is Fra Maha Batsakorn Pio Basso. And he was born in Thailand in 1974, became a novice monk in 1988, and he was fully ordained in 1995. And he specialized in Pali and Abhidharma studies. He is a general sec secretary of the Council of the Buddhist Monks in the UK, in Ireland, and the secretary of the Theravada Buddhist Sangha in the UK. And he resides at the Buddha Patipa Temple as a teacher in, in the Dharma and as a meditation master. So without taking up any more of our time, I'll hand over to our, to our very distinguished guest and who we're absolutely delighted that he's been able in this difficult time to, to, um, to, to come and, and do this electronically. And he's actually speaking directly from the temple, in Buddha Patipa Temple. And uh, so you'll see a little taste of it. So thank you very much for coming, um, and uh, we look forward to your talk. By the way, during the talk, you'll see a dialogue box, which will come up. And um, you can put questions in there, and at the end of it, I'll read the questions out. So at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little dialogue chat, it says, and you can write in there the questions. Thank you so much. Namato, Ratanata Yesa, may pay my home and the trip and gem, the Buddha, the Dhamma Sangha. Very good evening to friends in the Dhamma. I'm very honored to be invited by the Buddhist Society to give a talk. Um, before I actually begin the talk, me and my colleague, we do a very brief chanting just to make the atmosphere peaceful. If you like, you may sit still with your eye closed while we are performing the brief chanting. Arahang Samma Sambhoto Bhakawa Uttang Bhakawa Sambhutasa 
นะโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะอิติปิโสภะคะวะอะระหะสัมมาสัมพุทธงเวชาจารณะสัมปันโนสุขโตโลกาวิทูอนุตตารโปุริสาธรรมสารทิสาธาเทวมโนสานังพุโทโธภาควาติสวัสาตัวภาคาวาตาธรรมโมสันเทติโกอาการลิโกเอหิปัสสิโกโอปนายโกปัจจตังเวทิตาภูวินโยหิติสุปฏิปันโนภะคะวะโตสาวกัสังโฆโอชุปฏิปันโนภะคะวะโตสาวกัสังโฆยายาปฏิปันโนภะคะวะโตสาวกัสังโฆสามีจิปฏิปันโนภะคะวะโตสาวกัสังโฆยาทิทางจัตตาริปุริสายุคานิอัตถาปุริสัมุคลาเอสาภะคะวะโตสาวกัสังโฆอาหุนัยโยปาหุนัยโยทาคีนัยโยอันชะลีการะนิโยอานุตตารังปุญญาเขตตังโลกัสสะดีพระสวิหะนาวดันดันบรีฟชันติงอวิลิตเซย์ทั้งคิวทูมายคลิกิสเนมิสพระปัญญาวิสซิมพลิมิสวิสตุมสุปัญญามินวิสตุมสุตุเดย And we have prapanya or mangpanya to join me the brief chanting. Right, shall I begin now? Well, very good evening to everyone again. Um, as I said earlier, that I'm very pleased and very honored to be invited by the Buddhist Society to give a talk to share my experience. To share the um, teachings, and to give you a little bit background about myself, um, I'm from Thailand, but I have been living in the UK since 2006, and at the moment, and I'm residing at the Buddha Bhati Bhak Temple near Wimbledon, and the topic for today's talk is about karma. I think everyone is familiar with the word karma. Um, I would like to share the screen. So that everyone can see the slide. And at the end of my talk, any questions are welcome. Well, the topic for tonight is the concept of karma and modern challenges. I would like to begin my talk with a short video. I will tell you later why I show you this video.
Right. Um, well, the reason why I show you this video because this is how gamma is understood by the modern people. And we often hear the people saying, oh, that's because of your gamma, so you deserve it. And here I just would like to give some background of my talk and why I choose to talk about this topic. So like, like I said earlier, some people today like to take gamma to blame everything bad that happened to them. Gamma is misused to attack other people when something bad, something miserable happened. Oh, you deserve it. That's because of your gamma. You deserve it. And then gamma is also used to explain the bad consequence that happen to the doer's close people in present lifetime. Yes, for example, if the father had done something bad and then it affect, the gamma affect their, uh, his daughter or their relative. Um, well, there is nothing seriously wrong with this idea, but it seems the concept of gamma is slightly misunderstood. So this is the background of my talk. And now let me begin with what the modern challenges are for the teaching of Gamma or the law of Gamma. For example, I often hear the questions how you use the teaching of Gamma to explain to those who were born poor, handicapped, or deformed, how you use the teaching of Gamma to explain to the innocent people who were killed because of the war they never fit. How you explain by using the law of Gamma to the nice and sincere people that other people like to take advantage of them or even to shoot on them. Um, I think for many people, they may feel unfair, they work very hard, they devote their time, their energy for the company, but as a result, they never receive the promotion. They feel down if you said, although I try very, very hard, I'm, tr I'm trying to be the best person, I try to improve my work, my company, but look at the result I receive. So all of these are just the examples of modern challenges that we often hear from, from the people. But to begin with, I want to make it clear some kinds of belief that are contradictory to the law of Gamma. And there are at least three beliefs. Pukpe Gatawada, the belief that all happiness and suffering arise from previous gamma. Isaratnim Manahedawada, all happiness and suffering are caused by the creation of a supreme being. And last but not least, Ahedu Apatiyawada, the belief that all happiness and suffering are random. So for those who take gamma just only for the consequence of their bad deeds, it can fall into the first belief. Because happiness, unhappiness, suffering and pain are not actually form only previous gamma, but there are other conditions, there are other factors as well. Um, now, let's see. I think everyone is familiar with the um, definition of gamma, especially those who uh, follow Theravada tradition. The definition of gamma can be found in one sutta. But here, look at that word, gamma, in Sanskrit, gamma in, in Bali language. So both words mean action or doing. So, 
whenever one does something or say something or even think about something, it is called gamma or karma. Um, the term gamma or karma is used specially to define those actions which spring from intention in Bali language, jaitana, of all beings except those who attain arahantaship. Well, the reason why that I include except those who attain arahantaship because whatever the arahas or the person who achieved the his sanctity does, speaks or thinks, their actions are not regarded as gamma. They are regarded as action, just action or giriya in Bali language. So apart from the arahat, the actions performed physically, verbally, even mentally, all of that action with jayatana, with intention, are called gamma or krama. Um, here we can see the reference from uh, Nibbei Dika Sutta, when the Buddha spoke about gamma. How the Buddha defined Gamma? Jaitana hung big away Gammang Wadami, which means intention, I tell you, is Gamma. Intending one does Gamma by ways of body, speech, and intellect. So, this is the definition given by the Buddha himself. And I think. Many are familiar with um, the word gamma, but for those who follow uh, other tradition, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But we need to distinguish between gamma and vipaka. I think the confusion occurs because people are confused between gamma and vipaka. They like to take gamma for vipaka. For example, when something bad happens, they say, "Oh, this is because of your gamma." In fact, gamma is simply intentional action or any action performed with intention. When we want to talk about the vipaka or the fruit or the result of gamma, we call it in Bali language vipaka. Now, vipaka means the fruit. And there are at least three kinds of vipaka or fruits. Wholesome action, gusala gamma, that result in happiness. Then unwholesome action or agusala gamma that result in unhappiness. And there is another kind of gamma, neutral gamma, apayagata gamma, which means there are neither good nor bad. But both good and bad actions, wholesome, unwholesome, gusala, agusala gamma, we bring about the fruition or the result of vipaga, either within this person's lifetime or in the context of a future rebirth. Then how we define good and bad gamma? Well, basically, good gamma is determined by good intention. For example, if our action is driven by compassion, loving kindness and wisdom, that action can be regarded as good gamma. On the contrary, evil action is driven by three defilements like anger, like hatred, like a, uh, desire, greed, delusion, then the gamma or the action will be called akusala gamma. And now let's see how gamma works. This is one of the uh, Buddha's saying, as the seed, so the fruit. Who does good, receive good. Who does evil, receive evil. But many people may ask the question, from what we have seen today, although you are a good person, but nothing we guarantee that something good will happen to you. So this confuses many people because 
when they do something good, they expect to receive something good in return. Well, from the Theravada Buddhist point of view, the reason why gamma, especially good gamma, doesn't work the way we want because of our action is related to other conditions or other factors. There are four pairs of factors which affect the fruition of our gamma, our action. And the first one in Bali called Sampati or four advantages. The second four pairs for disadvantages or vipatti. Now we will go to see into the detail of the first one, sampatti or four advantages and what are the four advantages that affect the fruition of karma. And the first one, kati sampatti. Kati means the place. In this context, it refers to favorable birthplace, environment, circumstances or career. And then upati sampati, the asset, the suitability and support of the body. Gala sampati, gala means time, not only time but also opportunity. The asset of opportunity or aptness of time or the support of time. Bayoka sampati, the attribute of action, aptness of action, or advantages of actions. Sometimes gamma doesn't work the way we want because we may lack, lack one of this. I can give you the example and if you do something good to the wrong person at the wrong place, it may bring the bad result. I have a monk friend who likes to teach people and one day he happened to see the group of young men drinking and until they were drunk. Because of his uh, kind heart, he wanted to help them. So he approached them and told them that drinking alcohol is not good. So this is an example of teaching at the wrong place, to the wrong people. As a result, he was beaten. It's happened. Um, like gamma, so in some cases, gamma doesn't work because it may um, maybe one of these advantages is missing. Um, like upati uh, sampati, suitability and support of the body. You would like to uh, be a model, but your uh, physical figure is not good enough. And then being a model is not good for you. So here's just the example. So now we're going to go to see the other, the other side of four disadvantages in Bali language, vipatti. Again, kati vipatti unfavorable birthplace, environment, circumstances or, ca or career, like to be born into a sphere, locality or country with ease regressive and unsupported. Opativi party, weakness or defectiveness of body, I, I just give the example. And then Gala Vipati, defectiveness of time. You do good thing at the wrong time, do good thing to the wrong people. By your kavipati, weakness of action, which means you don't have enough effort. Or you just do it and then stop. Now, another, another issue, yeah, gamma and rebirth. Well, gamma and rebirth are related. For some people who don't believe in life after death, they may object, I don't believe in life after death.
but to completely understand the teaching of Gamma, rebirth is related. But to define what rebirth actually is, it depends on on the on the way you you define. Well, some Buddhist scholars like to refine rebirth like to be born, even in this special lifetime, for example, whenever you are angry, you were born in hell, whenever you are greedy, you were born as beta or hungry ghost, or whenever you mind is diluted, you become animal. Now, let's see. Good karma leads to good existence, like to be born as a human being or to be born in the heaven like a deity or angel. Bad karma leads to woeful existence, like a hell, demon, to be born as a hungry ghost. Um, I think we can use our common sense to judge what is good, what is bad. For something, when you do, and then you are unhappy, you feel regret, or it causes bad consequence, it causes pain and suffering to other people. We may call that action bad or agusala gamma. On the contrary, and if we do something by using our common sense, for example, to help other people, to look after people, to share our belonging, food with other people, after we do it, we feel happy, we feel relieved. So that action can be regarded as good karma. Um, from the Theravada Buddhist point of view, apart from good and bad karma, we also have another karma. So this kind of karma will lead to deadlessness or nibbana. If we do charity, for example, to offer food, to give food, to share. As a result, we may be born as a human being again, or we may be born in the heaven as an angel or deity. If we commit some bad deeds, like to kill, to steal, to um, cheat on your spouse or partner, to tell a lie, that kind of karma may lead to a woeful existence. Not, not only after this life, even in this present lifetime, you feel bad, you feel unhappy about your action. But by following, by applying the mid phone part, that will lead us to deadlessness or Nibbana, which is the ultimate goal of Buddhism. Um, the mid phone part consists of understanding, right thought, right speed, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. And all of these at form parts can be applied even in our daily life. So I would like to give the, the quote from His Holiness Dalai Lama. He said that countless rebirth lie ahead, both good and bad, the effect of gamma or action are inevitable. As long as a person is a normal human being or normal being, as long as we still have greed, hatred and delusion, it is inevitable not to be reborn. So for sure, after this lifetime, if you don't achieve the Randachip yet, you will be reborn in the samsara. So my colleague just would like to leave because we have a long, long day today and we start the morning chanting at 8 and then in the afternoon we have the candlelight procession, the long chanting, a talk. Right, okay, let's continue. Um, unfortunately, I could see some part, oh, I think I know how to do it. I, could, I couldn't see some part on, on the right part. Well, now let's see, come up with regard to the term of efficiency. In fact, there are 12 kinds, but I just want to talk about 8 kinds. Immediately effective gamma, or in Bali language, did that dhamma way to near gamma. So whatever we do, if it 
affect us immediately, even in this present lifetime. We call it Dittatama, uh, Dittatama Vedaniya Gamma. And the second one subsequently affected Gamma, Upacha Vedaniya Gamma. The Gamma or the consequence of Gamma that we affect in the next life. Indefinitely affected Gamma, Aparabraya Vedaniya Gamma, which means after the second life. So gamma will never expire. Whenever gamma has a charm, it will get us good or bad. Yeah, both good and bad. And last one, the form of ineffective gamma, or in Bali we call it ahosi gamma. So ahosi gamma means the, the kind of gamma that doesn't have a charm to take the effect. Yes, for example, I'd like to give the example like a um, the criminal who was shot dead by the police. Although he had killed many people in the past from what he has committed, he chose to be in the prison for a long, long time. But because he was shot dead by the police, so when he's dying, and then he, don't, he doesn't need to go to the prison. However, he won't be able to escape from his karma. I mean, after this lifetime. And then, gamma with regards to uh, potency. Karu gamma, or wedding gamma, that this produces is result in this life, or in the next life immediately. And there are both a good sign. For the bad sign, like uh, anandriya gamma, the heinous, crumbs, metric sign, patric sign, killing arahat, or causing schism among the Sangha. What about good sign? For those who meditate, when you achieve absorption, if your absorption is still there, after that you may be born in the Brahma Loga. This is from the belief of Theravada tradition. The second one, proximate gamma, asana gamma. Yeah, asana gamma means the action or gamma that occur just before a person is about to die. In Theravada Buddhism, we have one Pali saying, Jitte Sangilite Tukati Pati Gangha, which means before you die and if your mind is impure, wolf existence is expected. On the contrary, Jitte at Sangilite Sukati Pati Gangha. If your mind is not, uh, sorry, if your mind is pure, if your mind is not diluted, then heavily existence is expected. So, just before a person dies, there are at least three things happen. Gamma, Gamma nimitta and Kati nimitta. Gamma means action, whatever we have done, when we were still healthy and strong, it will appear like a film show. And then Gamma nimitta, the side of our action, whatever we do, good or bad, it will appear like a film show. Then Gamma and um, Kati, yeah, Kati nimitta, which means the side of your next life. After you die from this lifetime, the sight of next light can appear like um, the wood, the forest, or the house, the palace, or even something nice. And if it appears in your mind like the house, there is a possibility that that person will be born as a human being again. Or if it appears like the forest or the fire, it is possible that that person may be reborn as an animal or even in hell. And then habitual gamma, arjinna gamma. So this one refers to any kind of action that we habitually do in our daily life. Although it's not very very gamma, but if we do it regularly, it will become our habit. When the first two um, doesn't 
Uh, when the first two do not take the effect, and then the habitual gamma or ajna gamma will take the effect. And now reserve gamma, katata gamma. This gamma refers to all actions that are done once and soon forget it. Like uh, what we normally do in daily activities, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but it does not bring um, great demerit. Right. Now, another question. What can I do to remove my previous negative gamma? So whatever we have done, we can't change it. Like we can't change what we have done yesterday. So when gamma, be good or bad, has done, we can't change it. But in order to avoid having negative thought that leads to negative action in the future, we need to observe and control our own thought, behavior, and destroy our negative attitudes. So we usually begin with the way we think, the way we look at things. Um, meditation is one of the techniques. Similarly, we can observe, study, or meditate, by observing our own mind. In this way, we can encourage positive thought that will lead to the positive action. Before we do something, there must be the thought arising in our mind. Then we can avoid negative gamic seed to ripen by purifying it using the four powers of purification. Yeah, I, will, I will show you later. Although this does not eliminate the negative gambic action, but it can avoid the result to occur. And now what are the four powers of purification? We need to have a strong um, object. We call it the power of object, which means that, okay, when we decide to do something good, we need to have the goal of life. For those who are Buddhist or who follow Buddhist teaching, of course, you choose to take refuge in the Tripanjaya Buddha, Dhamma Sangha. You choose practice compassion. You choose feel compassion towards all sensual beings. Then power of regret. It is normal for ordinary people to make a mistake. Even monks make a mistake. Even those who have been good for a long, long time, because of the temptation, because of some reason, they might make a mistake. Making a mistake is normal, but if we feel regret, and then we can say to ourselves, okay, I won't do it again, so that we won't produce any bad karma in the future. And then power of promise, as a logical consequence of the above, one choose promise not to repeat this negative action, although we can't help but try to minimize, try to avoid. And before we do something bad, maybe we can think for a while. What will happen if I do this? So although no one knows, but you know by yourself. Power of practice. Basically, any positive action with a good motivation can be used as practice. Like now, you're listening to the talk. I think your mind is peaceful, your mind is clear. And when we practice meditation, you feel peacefulness. Now, next question. Can we escape from the consequence of our bad karma? I would like to give the quote from the Dhammapata. Not in the sky, nor in the middle of the ocean, nor in the cave of a mountain. Is there a place where one may escape from the consequences of evil deed? So this means that whatever gamma we have committed, whatever good or bad deed we have done, we won't be able to escape from it unless, unless, unless that gamma doesn't have a charm. And here I just would like to give them the example, like the amount of salt in the glass of water and river. Well, remember that, and when we uh, talk about gamma, not all gamma we get you. 
like uh, the, the amount of salt in the glass. When we put the salt into the glass of water and then we drink that water, of course, that water will be very salty. And then when you throw this glass of water into the river, although the um, amount of salt is still actually the same, but because the amount of water is a lot, so we won't feel any salty taste. Another example, hunting dog and the running rabbit. And you can imagine, and this rabbit tried to run as far as it could, and the hunting dog tried to chase after the rabbit, that poor rabbit. If the rabbit runs fast, it could be safe. On the contrary, if the rabbit slow down until the uh, hunting dog catch it. So this is how gamma we get us. The more we do good deeds, the less chance bad gamma will get us. So by doing more and more good deeds, we will delay, we will delay the time. But whenever the bad gamma has a chance, of course, we won't be able to uh, run away from it. Now let's see the gamma that ends gamma. Here we have four kinds of gamma. Black gamma, like a bad this, agusala gamma, we produce black result. White gamma, like a gusala gamma, we produce white result. The gamma, both black and white, we produce the result both black and white. And last one, gamma neither black nor white, we produce the result neither black or white. Um, this being the gamma that ends gamma, in order to end gamma, number four, gamma neither black nor white, refer to the application of middle at phone part. The black gamma refer to agusala gamma or unwholesome action. White gamma, agusala gamma, wholesome action, it, uh, will produce the white result like to be born in the samsara as a human being, as an angel. And gamma both black and white. As a normal human being, we will do both good and uh, we will do both black and white. Sometimes we do good, sometimes we do bad. This means that sometimes we have something nice, sometimes we have something bad. When we go outside, we can't expect to see something nice on the time from the, the aspect of the Abhidhamma. When we say something bad, that's what we call Akusala Vipaga. When we say something nice, that is what we call Kusala Vipaga. But we can choose. We can choose. When, whenever we say something bad, we don't need to feel bad about it. We can change our mind to, to look at it. Right. I just, I think I'm almost finished. Now, question for the future. So, again, I would like to bring some quotation that the monks normally recite. Uh, at their morning chanting or evening chanting, all beings are the owners of their gamma, as of their gamma, born of their gamma, related to their gamma, supported by their gamma. Whatever action I shall do for good or for ill, of that I will be the heir. Peace and wisdom be with you. Thank you for your attention. Right now, I'm happy to take questions. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Good. Well, the first question, thank you very, very much. It was a, it was a very, very nice talk. and gives us a lot to think about. It was very um, comprehensive. Uh, but the first question is from Kitty DaCosta. 
And she asks, in the videos, um, were all the examples of people acting without intention? Um, at the, the video that you showed at the beginning of the, of the talk. And therefore, without intention, they're not actions that cause karma. Well, the reason why I showed the video, um, that's it, how the people understand karma today. And um, the video was titled as Instant Karma. So without intention, the action is not called karma. Yeah, it's called action. Yes, for example, when we drive after the rain, then the insect may die on our window screen. But we don't have any intention to kill them. So they don't die because of our intention, but they die because of our action. Or if someone happened to run over the frog, you may feel bad about it, but you do not create bad grammar because you don't have intention. That answer the question? Yeah. Well, the reason why I showed the video, I just would like to explain how people understand gamma today. They, they tend to say, oh, this is because of your gamma. Yeah. Well, in some cases, they don't have an intention. It just happened like, like an accident. Yes, there was a... Um I remember after the tsunami, somebody came, some religious leader came and said, ah oh, yes, well that's because of the bad karma. I don't and think it's, it's right to say that. They got upset amongst them. Yeah. Very devout Buddhists, they got very upset and didn't think that was right. Hmm. We shouldn't blame karma alone. Yeah, we shouldn't blame karma alone. As I said, because karma is one condition, it's one factor. And there are all the conditions and all the factors that allow one event. Well, there's another question here which is interesting. Um, are there both intentional thoughts that create karma and unintentional thoughts that do not? That's from Wendy. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, because you can have very negative, unintentional thoughts that come into your head. Yeah. It can be very, you know. You would imagine they could be, you know, quite seriously karma forming, and um, so that's the question really. And I think that's the question that probably occupies a lot of people's minds. Well, we need to understand the word jaitana. Jaitana or intention is one of a mental factor or jaitasika, according to Abhidhamma. So whenever jaitana predominates or action, we call it intentional action. In many cases, for example, we dream. We don't have any intention to dream. Even in our dream, you may kill that you kill someone, or you may hit someone. But that kind of intention, oh sorry, that kind of action is not is not performed with intention. Well, to me. Intentional thought produce gamma. Un in unintentional thought, it just called gamma, uh, action, but it's, it does not produce gamma. Yes, thank you very much. There's another one here, um, and that's from David Gill. He he asked, um, could you please explain further the karma that ends karma? Right, um, the gamma that ends gamma, and first I begin with black gamma, uh, and result black, white gamma result uh, white, both black and white result both black and white. But the gamma that we end gamma is what we call the middle phone part. In order to escape from gamma, in order to escape from the cycle of samsara, we need to apply the mid eight form part, right understanding, to develop the way we look at things in the right way. Right thought, to have the positive thought. Right action, to perform action, not only action, but even 
um, sorry, right action samma gammanta, to do something right, to do something right is. Samma wajama, right effort, to put the right effort. Samma waja to speak nicely, to speak the right thing. Samma um, sati, right mindfulness. And last one, samma samadhi, to have the right concentration. Whenever we apply this with the phone pass in our daily life, gradually we will be able to end our gamma. So by changing our action, by changing our, and the way we uh, do things in our life, eventually we will be able to end gamma, which means that and we escape from the cycle of birth and death. Whenever we achieve the Aranda chip, when we achieve an enlightenment, and then we won't come back to be born as a human again. This is what it, what I mean to the gamma that end gamma. Yes, thank you. And there's another one here which is sort of similar. Um, is there a form of balance whereby previous bad deeds can be balanced out or superseded by future good deeds? That's from Molly Jackson. Yeah. Can you repeat the question again? Um, is there a form of balance whereby previous bad deeds, negative things one has done, can be balanced out or superseded by future good deeds? Well, we focus on the present lifetime. We never actually know what we have done in the past. We just guess. It. When something bad happened, people like to guess, oh, that's maybe the result of my uh, bad karma in my previous lifetime. I think we, we choose to focus on the present lifetime now in order to balance our, our gamma. We, we can't change what we have done in the past, but we, can't, we can change what we are going to do now in this present lifetime. Um, it's quite hard to, to know if we have done something bad in the past because we don't have the power to remember what we have done in the past. Um, our memory is quite limited. It's, for example, we can't remember everything that happened many years ago. So don't talk about in our previous life. Some people have a very good memory. So those who are able to remember their previous life, maybe because of their have special talent or special ability to remember their previous life. And from my understanding, just tr try to focus on the now. Uh, start doing good from today and then what we do good today it will be our good uh, gamma in the future oh sorry it will be a good gamma in the in the past thank you there's a very there's an interesting question here and, that, and that's about people who are mentally disturbed and the questioner would like to know that if someone is mentally ill and can't help their behavior uh, will they suffer negative karma. He says he's thinking about criminals who have urges to kill or harm others. Well, those people already suffer. They suffer because of their own action. We shouldn't blame their gamma in their previous life. We just feel more compassion to, towards these people instead of um, being upset or being angry with them. We when we understand them, they behave like that because of their uh, mental disorder. Instead, we just feel more compassion and if we can help, we try to help. Because they can't help themselves. Well, to me, we shouldn't blame them for, for, for behaving like that. But we should try to understand them and try to help them in the way we can. But if we can't help them, what we can do, we need to accept and understand. Although we try to help, but nothing much we can do, then we need to apply upeka or equanimity. And I have some experience with um, people with mental disorder. They came to the temple and then they try to uh, they try to seek some advice from me, or they try to help them, but it seem it doesn't seem to work for them because they repeat asking me the same question again and again, I said, well, I can suggest you to focus on the now, because when you focus on the now, 
you won't worry about the past, you won't think about the past and you won't worry about the future. When you are at the now, then gradually you will be able to let go. Uh, you are um, pain. So I just suggest them to, to, to focus on the now. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to say, how does karma affect those individuals with psychosis who do bad things? You're getting, um, and I think this is also from, from Choi Kok who asked the last question. Yeah. Well, gamma produces its result mentally and also physically. When we do something bad, we feel bad. This is how gamma takes an effect. Or when we do something good, we feel good, we feel proud, we feel happy. So psychologically, if you do something, then you feel bad about it. That may be the bad gamma. So we can try to change the way we, 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 we uh, do it. That answer your question? Because I'm not quite sure about the answer, so I try my best. Well, here's another question that maybe in, while these questions are being answered, uh, uh, it will become apparent what the meaning is. This is from Mark Taberna. He asks, could one feel black and white karma from the actions of one's relatives, for example, from a great great grandparent, because we are genetically linked? Well, many people like to explain to um, what happened to their um, family member, like a uh, um, this, this is kind of genetic gamma. Um, well, they could be related, but not directly, and we may call it collective gamma. And we were born as a family member, as a son, daughter, because we have related gamma. And we receive the bad consequence of gamma because we are related. In that way. But we can change our destiny. Yeah, to me, I strongly believe that whatever we have done in the past, we can't change it, but we can change our destiny. And there was the story of the young novice monk who was supposed to die within seven days. So his master told him to visit his family. On the way to his hometown, he happened to see a fish in the um, a drying pond. With his great compassion, he took that fish and freed that fish into the river. Because of this compassion, because of this action, he didn't die within seven days. So this means good karma can change the bad karma. But we never know. Yeah, we never know. If we do good, something may, something different may happen. Yeah, this is from from Michael Laycock. Who, there's a lot of questions about mental health here. From Michael Laycock, who asks, um, going back to the first slide, is present disability or mental health problems always a result of past karma? Could you repeat the question again? Um, is present disability or mental health problems always a result of past karma? Well, I, I don't blame the karma alone. There are other factors that are related as well. It could be genetic, it could be the environment, it could be uh, something else. So again, karma is just one condition, it's just one factor. We shouldn't blame karma alone. Yes, there, there, there are a number of factors which are not considered to be, I mean results, you know, which are not considered to be part of the, of karma. Yeah, that's right. Things why. like earthquakes or weather, or things like that. Yeah. I suppose those are the things you were talking about at the beginning, about environment and beneficial conditions and and places of birth and so on. Yeah. 
they had nothing to do with the moral consequences of one's previous actions. And some people tend to think of it as a universal law, where everything is part of the karmic system. Now there is a Another question. Are there any more questions from our audience? No, no more questions. Well, that was a very, very helpful talk. And I think it does clarify a lot of things. Um, it's interesting how many of the talks are about mental health. Yeah. yeah maybe I, I would do more research on that. So I, I, to me, I don't like to blame Gamma alone for the mental health problem because that would be a kind of abuse to me, that would be a kind of abuse. Instead, we just feel more compassion towards them. And it's often true, isn't it, that people who have had mental health problems and recover Yeah can sometimes benefit society a great deal, can, yeah. can contribute enormously. They may start off young with a lot of anxiety and depression and fear, and then they do some practice and they begin to understand themselves, and then they can help other people when they've overcome their own problems. They can be of huge benefit to others. So sometimes what appears to be a negative bad karma actually consequences of something which is very good and, and good for everyone. Well, I think that brings us to the end of a really a wonderful evening. And I must say, are you, are you in the Bihara? Because the, the, what is behind you is so beautiful. Yeah, this is the main the temple. And it's absolutely lovely. Well, well, we're, we're, still, we're still closed at the moment. So the temple is not open for the public and we just follow the government guideline we never know we we open the temple again but we do allow some people to come and offer food but no public entry yeah, just see and wait until the lockdown is eased yes well can i once again thank you very much Penty, for a really lovely talk and, and also for all our guests and everyone who came tonight. Um, perhaps it encourages one to take up some, some practice and then we can Im improve our karma and have a much happier life. But it is absolutely essential to understanding this whole problem about happiness and unhappiness and the way to, to get out of all these difficulties that we have. Thank you so much, Bente. You're welcome.